Hi, I'm Lucy, and I'm going to be presenting some copper isotope data on some enclaves from an ancient volcanic system and a modern volcanic system. First, some background on copper isotopes. What actually fractionates them? Although there is a bit of debate in the literature about the exact causes, studies have agreed that fluid interaction plays a really important role. So some of these potential fluid interactions include surface weathering, as we can see on this diagram here, with depth versus the copper isotope compositions, interaction with hydrothermal fluids, metasomatism, as you can see, the metasomatized peridotites in this example have a much larger range of copper isotopic compositions um, than the non-metasomatized peridotites. And in this talk, I'm going to explore the potential for deeper source magmatic volatiles causing copper isotope fractionation. The question driving this research has been, can mafic enclaves transport fluids and metals? So in a volcanic system, um, the majority of volcanic systems are sourced from some kind of mafic magma down below that we, we don't see at the surface, but mafic enclaves can give us a bit of insight into this system. So analyzing mafic enclaves from an active system can potentially help to constrain the role of magmatic volatiles coming from below in the transport and enrichment of metals such as copper. I'm also gonna be talking about a subset of samples from um, a much older volcanic system, the Gawler Range Volcanics, which are 1.59 billion years old, which also have mafic enclaves, to see if we can apply what we understand about active systems to these ancient magmatic provinces. I'm gonna be talking about lead 210 to radium isotopes. These are a really um, important tool in active volcanism as there's a range of half-lives which give us very useful timescales of volcanic processes. So specifically the lead 210 radium um, pair are used to constrain volatile fluxing and we use this in the mafic enclaves and their host andesites. So we're interested in this part of the U-series chain and the decay of radium to lead has a very important intermediary daughter, which is 222 radon, which partitions into the volatile or gas phase. If we have an accumulation of volatiles in the volcanic system, um, we have a lot of radon, which is then going to decay to lead 210. And this gives us an excess of lead 210 over 226 radium, so numbers above one. If, however, we have volatile loss, so degassing from the system, we've taken that radon out of the chain, we're not going to be decaying to lead 210. And so we end up with deficits. So this ratio becomes a number below one. And in this way, we can start to constrain volatile fluxing in systems. So here's the data that we have for this particular example from Sufri Hills volcano. So along the x-axis, we have the Delta 65 copper, the copper isotopes. And on the y-axis, we have our lead 210 to radium activity ratios. Looking first at the andesites, you can see that they all lie below the line of one, which shows that they have experienced volatile loss. They also have quite similar, in general, copper isotopic compositions of around minus 0.5. In contrast, those enclaves show a lot more variation. So the ones with the highest um, lead to 10 ratio uh, also seem to be the most fractionated. They have very negative values. And importantly, they all sit above this line of one, which means that they have experienced volatile accumulation on a very short time scale, probably a few decades. We can look a bit more into this looking at just the elemental data. So copper, PPM on the y-axis, and I've put on the x-axis there, the thorium in PPM as a measure of, of magmatic evolution, as it's an incompatible element. So we can see that the enclaves and the andesites have very different behavior. In the enclaves, copper is acting as a compatible element, whereas in the andesites, it's acting as an incompatible element. And we can see with these vectors that probably the variation that we see in the andesites is due to crystal fractionation, such as amphibole or plagioclase, which are important phenocrysts in, the, in these rocks. The enclaves could be experiencing sulfide crystallization, but it's more likely that they are experiencing some sort of interaction with a magmatic volatile phase, which copper would also be compatible in. 
and we um, suggest that probably it's the expulsion of a magmatic volatile phase coupled with crystallization which is driving this trend and interestingly the samples which have the higher elemental copper have those more fractionated negative copper isotope values and the highest lead to 10 excesses, which may suggest that they're retaining a part of the magmatic volatile phase. So we think that probably the mafic magma is, is um, bringing melt and magmatic volatile phases into the system. It's transferring them very rapidly to an interface area at, under Sufri Hills Volcano. And then it's, um, it's not interacting so much with the andesite, but it's expulsing those volatile phases into pathways. And there's some good evidence of these in the form of metal rich veins, which had been previously described by Playa et al in 2014. Going back in time, substantial amount of time to 1.59 billion years old, and now looking at South Australia, we have the iron oxide copper gold province, um, which also includes Olympic Dam. And this is hosted in these intrusive rocks, the Hills of a Suite, which are contemporaneous with the Gawler Range volcanics. And the Gawler Range volcanics um, are mostly silicic magmas and they uh, contain mafic enclaves. So can these enclaves potentially tell us if the mantle in this area was primed and ready for copper mineralization? And here's the results that we have from that ancient system. So on the top of this diagram, um, I've put the copper, isotop um, uh, copper isotopic values for the Sufira Hills, volcano enclaves and andesites. And then you can see in the lower part of the diagram, the enclaves from the Gawler Range Volcanic, the GRV, also seem to trend to quite negative copper isotopic values compared to the host rhyolite, which is essentially um, on zero, so unfractionated values. And this compares with essentially non-fractionated or heavy isotope ratios for other mafic rocks, which are contemporaneous with the Gawler Range Volcanics. So what's this telling us? We think that possibly the enclaves are showing the residual signature of the movement of metals such as copper. And at Sufri Hills Volcanoes, there is strong evidence that the copper and the volatiles are coming from deeper levels, but they're actually bypassing a lot of the magmatic system, so that andesitic mass. So an important question is, where is the heavy copper? And we'd like to now have some samples of the hydrothermal system um, at Sufri Hills to see if we can track down that heavy copper.